the more soluble the phosphorus source you're using, the more important it is for you to do this kind of process. Forget about sustainability. You want to enrich ecosystems. Every bean is equipped to live a positive energetic balance. Keep it pruned. We are cultivating abundance. Not a problem to cut down trees. The problem is not planting them. What is up YouTube? Welcome to the Agroforestry Academy channel. In today's video I'm gonna give you a little tip on how to use phosphate fertilizers in acidic soils. As you can see, I am in a garden. It's a house I just moved into. And well, I have this garden and it's only grass, but of course I'm starting to plant some stuff here. So it's just, a, I'm just gonna do a small strip of, um, with some vegetables and some fruit trees and probably some eucalyptus or something else to produce organic matter on this edge of the of the garden and so today I'm preparing of just a small plot of it's like half a square meter or so uh, where I'm gonna plant some beets cauliflower and and some broccoli some seedlings that I produced and the soil is not great soils here are very acidic they've got a bunch of these uh, these rocks in the middle um, this land specifically when the the previous when the owner actually of the land because I'm renting the house but when the, the owner was planting this grass he added some lime and I took a soil sample and it's uh, there's no need for lime but there is need for some phosphate and some some other fertilizers, some micronutrients. And what I'm going to be doing here is I just added and I mixed into the soil some castor beans meal, which is a leftover from from the castor bean processing. And now I'm going to add some bone meal. So. The thing about phosphorus in acidic soils is this. The iron and aluminum oxides in the soil, which are very present in acidic soils, they will take hold of, of phosphorus. And they have a much greater potential to take hold of phosphorus than plants' roots do. So when you mix phosphate into the soil, the more you mixed it, the more you're given an advantage to the soil to grab that phosphate before your plants are able to use it. Because the thing is, plants, I mean the soil, it's not completely deprived of phosphorus. But actually what happens is that phosphorus is, is bound to the soil particles because of this attraction. So many times there is phosphorus in the soil. So why do we add phosphorus? To give more readily available phosphorus while we build the microbiology in the soil, which will then be able to access this phosphorus that's bound to the soil particles. So if you get a bunch of phosphorus fertilizers, in my case, bone meal, and you just add to the soil and you mix it very well, this phosphorus will quickly become unavailable to the plants and then the plants gonna have a hard time acquiring it. So what I like to do is this. Before planting and after I've done all the soil mixing, you know, I'm not gonna mix the soil anymore. I open some furrows, as you can see, and I'm gonna drop the fertilizer in the furrows, the bone meal in this case. And Here's the bone meal. As you can see, I'm wearing a, a professional, professional shovel from my nephew. <laughs> and um, so the bone meal, I'm adding about uh, 260 grams of bone meal per square meter. I already did a measure with my hand. This is about 50 
50 grams some it's, it's 260 grams per square meter this little place has about uh, like half a square meter so I'm adding like I'm gonna add three three handfuls of this it's a little bit more but than the 260 grams that's okay so I'm gonna drop it just like this right so it's not gonna be mixed with the soil this reduces the interaction and the contact between soil particles and phosphorus molecules so this will reduce a lot the this binding of phosphorus from the soil and the plant is going to have as it develops its roots it's going to have direct access to phosphorus because this needs uh, some acidic conditions in order to sol to make this phosphorus soluble but then the soil is acidic and the plant's root will also exudate some acids in order to make the, the phosphorus available so now I'm just gonna close the furrows and be happy there you go so I greatly reduced the advantage that the soil has over the plants in terms of acquiring phosphorus now this is especially important when you're starting systems because you don't have a soil microbiology well established once you do the plants will have a better uh, they're gonna be better in acquiring phosphorus because of the presence of mycorrhizal fungi and this is what we want but in the beginning in order to kickstart the process it's really important that you use fertilizers properly and efficiently so there you go now I'm gonna plant my little uh, little vegetables now another thing that you want to do is as you plant your seedlings check so I'm opening up little little holes in the organic matter to first I'm gonna put in the broccoli seed seedlings then the the uh, beets one uh, since plants until they take root and find the phosphate that we added in the furrows that's gonna take a little bit of time so what I like to do is just to give them just a little bit of something you can see it's just a little pinch around the the actual planting bed so that it has a a little bit of phosphorus in the very beginning because that's super important for plants to have a nice kickstart so once I do that I'm gonna get here my cauliflower seedling I'm gonna put it here and then I'm gonna lightly press the soil around it in order to make sure the soil has proper contact with the plants. Okay. This is good. Now I'm gonna pull the pull back the, the organic matter to really cover nice and tightly the plant and that's it. Now I am being a bit optimistic about growing vegetables here because even with all the care and the fertilizers and organic matter and everything this soil is not good check it out this is the situation of the soil like I said it's very acidic it's got very little organic matter it doesn't hold water at all uh, it, it quickly saturates and starts throwing water out the leaf cutter ants are working quite heavily here but we're gonna work the soil and I'm gonna keep you updated to see the progress in the soil development and if I can't grow cauliflowers and beets and other things now I will certainly be able to do that in a couple of months two or three months for sure. Alright guys thank you for watching 
I hope you enjoyed the video and it's helpful. Uh, and this, uh, of course, I'm doing it in a very small scale, but this applies to whatever scale you're, you're working on. The more soluble the phosphorus source you're using, the more important it is for you to do this kind of process. If you're new to the channel, hit the like button, check out our full agroforestry course. If you're interested in supporting the channel, join us in the Patreon community. Here's a link. And uh, that's that. Thank you for watching. I'm Felipe for the Agroforestry Academy and I'm signing out.